Outside the college swimming championships in Atlanta, Georgia, a group of protesters are calling on the NCAA to save women's sports, protect athletes, and protect fairness. Inside that stadium is an athlete who has been making waves all season. Just hours ago, Leah Thomas became the first known transgender woman to win a Division I swimming title. She placed first in the 500-yard freestyle and could win more races in the coming days. Some of her teammates say it is just not fair, adding that they can't compete with Leah because she is biologically different from them. Tonight, for the first time on television, one of the most famous female athletes in history is weighing in. Tennis player Martina Navratilova, with 18 Grand Slam singles titles, including nine Wimbledon championships, 31 Grand Slam doubles titles, and also one of the first openly gay athletes. Martina is now a champion of LGBT rights. And in an exclusive interview with Rich McHugh, she says it is the NCAA that has this wrong. And what is happening in the pool in Atlanta is about way more than swimming. Where do you come out on Leah Thomas, whether she should be competing in the NCAA championships? Well, we're pointing fingers not at Leah at all. She has been playing by the book, whatever the rules are. She's uh, supposedly has, has been playing by them. Uh, I've been taking hormone replacement therapy for a couple of years now. This is not about Leah. This is about clearly as a man, when she was swimming as a man, she was finishing 200, 300, 400. Now she is finishing first. Uh, so, uh, which shows to me, if she had been born female in the first place, she would not be succeeding the way she is succeeding now. Never Tolova, a champion of LGBT rights, is a member of the Women's Sports Policy Working Group, pushing for fairness and safety for females instead of blanket transgender inclusion or exclusion in women's sports. Leah spoke to Sports Illustrated recently and says, um, I am a woman. I should be competing on the women's team. Do you agree with that? Everybody wants to swim as a female because it's an easier, it's an easier field, I think, to compete in. Um, Leah, I, I don't agree that she should be allowed to swim. But again, she's going by the rules. So the rules need to change. The rules need to change because this is not a fair fight. If I was a female swimmer, I, I don't have a chance. I really don't have a chance to be competing against uh, against Leah. Is the NCAA at fault for allowing Leah to oh, compete? Absolutely. Well, no, it's not about Leah now. It's they kick the can down the road. NCAA, all the all the governing bodies of sports, they kick the can down the road, particularly the IOC. They really don't want anything to do with it. And, and what the rules that they set, they set without any meaningful conversation from experts, from scientists, from athletes themselves. They just kind of did it in a vacuum. They still, to this day, they don't want to talk about it. And they, they want the different sports bodies make the decisions and make set the rules, but then they're not, they're not uh, adhering to them anyway. Uh, now they're saying it's going to be next year. We'll see. But they need to do a better job and they need to get these scientific experts in the field that say, OK, this is this is how it needs to go. Uh, otherwise, the controversy will continue. What, in your opinion, is the solution here? What is the right way forward? Well, it's not about excluding transgender women from winning ever, but it is about not allowing them to win when they were not anywhere near winning as 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 men. The solution, perhaps for now, is to swim in a lane or you can compete, but you don't get the medal. Uh, because the rules are not correct. But right now, the rules are what they are. Maybe put an asterisk there. If she starts breaking records left and right, Leah goes to the Olympics because she's hitting her prime now physically. And in the future, maybe have a, it should be an open category for, for everybody and then biological females. In 2019, I, I believe you came out and, and gave your position that transgender women athletes should not be allowed to compete as women. Has your position changed at all, or, or is that still your belief? So I, I educated myself and uh, said, okay, I'm going to learn a lot more about, about everything and how it all works, even though I thought I knew more than most people because of Renee Richards, who has been a lifelong friend, um, and, uh, and uh, came to the same conclusion, pretty much, that uh, we try to include transgender women as much as possible, but um, it needs to be fair. You personally have been labeled a turf. You've been labeled transphobic. Um, do you consider them those those definitions accurate or those descriptions? No, of accurate? course not. Of course they're not accurate. I'm not scared, nor am I. And am I exclusionary or any of that? I I welcome all athletes. I, I lo love competing, so I understand that people want to compete and want that opportunity. Uh, 
the climate is such that people can't speak out uh, or even ask questions. And, and then the athletes themselves are not allowed to speak out. They, they've been warned to be quiet. They've been warned to not say anything. They may lose their scholarship. Who knows how would they, they would be punished. In normal society, in everyday life, absolutely 100% inclusion. When it comes to sport, we have categories based on biology. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty much that. In the 1970s, Navratilova played against Renee Richards, one of the first professional athletes to identify as transgender. After Richards retired, she coached Navratilova to two Wimbledon titles. What do you make of the fact that we are having the same conversation? You are in the center of a conversation that you were in, I think it was 40 years ago. Uh, and we're having well, it again today. I, I, look, I was very welcoming of Renee. Uh, and I thought it was, it was great. But, you know, she had the reassignment surgery. She lived as a woman for a long, long time. And there was no doubt in, in our minds that she's, she's a woman. At the same time, had she started beating us, I don't know if I would have felt the same way. Because as a man, Rene wasn't even ranked top 100. But as a woman in her 40s, she was in uh, top 30 and on the women's tour. And I had my hands full with her when I played against her. We also played doubles together, and then she became my coach. But now I think it's clear we need to have a blanket rule so that people know where they stand and, and they can prepare properly. By the way, Rene Richards agrees with me on this, uh, that she probably shouldn't have been allowed to compete uh, 40 years ago. Looking back, she had an advantage. She knows that. Um, and maybe it didn't, wasn't that big a deal again because she wasn't starting winning, didn't start winning, winning tournaments. But now she's, on, she's totally agreeing with the position that, that I'm taking. And um, you know, it'd be hard for people to call her transphobic, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.